After more than five years of civil war and peace agreements signed in September 2018, South Sudan is struggling to recover. Nearly four million people are still refugees in neighboring countries or internally displaced. The trauma is deep, including among young people. Nearly 100,000 children and adolescents have been subject to grave violations. Among them are those who are called child soldiers. We're in Yambio, capital of the state of Western Equatoria in the south of the country. Every morning, dozens of teenagers gather at the Tindokav Vocational Training Center not far from the city. They are among some 3,600 children demobilized from armed forces or groups in South Sudan with the help of the United Nations. We need to protect their identity and change their names. Many, like 19-year-old Christian, were forcibly enrolled. Captured by an armed group at the age of 13, he lived in hell for two years. We were sleeping just under the tree. To get a food like this, it was difficult. Unless you go and attack people, they tell you like this, you can do these bad things, you can slaughter someone. If you don't do, they will kill you. My brother, we were there with my brother, they killed him. Anna was barely 13 when she was captured on her way to school. She's among those actually trained to fight. Her ordeal lasted over a year. When we were there, we were beating people, torturing people, robbing people's property. When we were told to shoot people, we had to do it. If you said no, they would torture you or kill you. It was also hard for girls because the boys used us as wives. Anna, now 16, is training in sewing alongside the other young girls in the center. Like many of them, she is the mother of a young child. Thanks to her training, Anna hopes to save money to pay for the future education of her little boy. And for her own, she dreams of becoming a doctor. Vocational training is only one part of a three-year rehabilitation program for former child soldiers, co-funded by the European Union's Humanitarian Aid Service. Addressing the needs of the children of South Sudan is one of our prime focuses. There are over two million children who have lost out on any form of education. What we're trying to focus is on the children because we don't want another lost generation, to give them some sort of basic education, to give them basic skills so they can participate in the reconstruction of their country. Christian, like all participants in the program, has benefited from psychological and social support, precious help to overcome the traumas of war. So are the social workers who are there to support them throughout their journey and help them reintegrate into their community, a challenge in most cases. Christian was rejected by his father. He was taken in by the brother of his dead mother. When he came back, he was wild. He couldn't understand anything, even me, his own uncle. I was afraid of him. Since he went to school, he learned many things and changed a lot. Now when he comes, he can greet people, he can smile. It's a big change. Managed by UNICEF, the program has transformed the lives of hundreds of youths. A long-term job which could be compromised for lack of funds. And thousands of children are still in the hands of the armed forces and groups. This program has been underfunded for over a year and we've been using other resources to keep it going. So unless we have fresh funding coming in, we might need to close Tindoka, where we are now, but also the entire program. And with the potential peace being prolonged, we will see more children coming out of the woods and they will need our help. But without funds, we can't help them properly. Christian wants to become a plumber. He knows that his future and that of thousands of other war children will also depend on the sustainability of the still fragile peace process in South Sudan. People are not many who are making concrete house because our place is full of war. But if, it, if the peace should be, everything could be possible. 